Are you sick and tired of changing the same settings in Automatic 11.11 every single time? For example, I never use the latent upscaler at 0.7 denoise with high risk fix, but it always starts like that. Or maybe you always start with the same negative prompt and don't like typing it or loading it from the styles. Modifying the Automatic 11.11 configuration file can help you with both these things. But wait, there's more. Maybe a maximum resolution of 2840 isn't enough for you because you want to flex your 24GB graphics card. Or maybe you want to generate images using 600 steps and 60 CFG because you are an absolute mad lad using your computer to roleplay as a hungry Catan. Modifying the automatic 1111 configuration file can do that too, and Greta Thunberg can't stop you. Welcome back, I'm Silicon Thaumaturgy, and today I'm going to show you how to modify the ui-config.json file to customize your automatic 1111 experience to your liking and provide you with a spreadsheet to help you along the way. You can find this ui-config.json file in your automatic 1111 base directory. Before you make any changes, we need to be responsible modders and back up the config file before messing with it. If you break your version and don't have a backup, that's on you. I also recommend making a copy of your modified version in case it gets overwritten when you update Automatic 11.11. This is especially true if you have your batch file set up to update each time you launch it. Now let's open up the file so I can show you how it works. As you can see, this file is a massive wall of text, and the contents differ depending on the extensions you have installed. My version has over 1,500 lines. Now this isn't quite as intimidating as it seems. We are about to cover how variables are named in the automatic 11.11 config file. If you have a computer science background or are already familiar with the meaning of the text in the config file, you might want to skip ahead with the bookmarks in the video description. Each of these lines represents a variable for an interface element like a slide or a checkbox. A single element can have multiple variables associated with it. For example, here are the variables for a slider. Visible is whether the slider is shown in the GUI. Value is the starting value for the slider. Minimum defines the lowest value for the slider, while maximum defines the highest value for the slider. Step determines the increments for the slider. However, sliders are the most complicated interface element. Text boxes and checks boxes only have two variables each, a true or false value for visibility and a value. The value for text boxes can be either a string in quotes or a number, while the value for a text box can only be true or false. There is one important oddball, which is the variable for styles. By default, the value for styles is empty brackets. To populate a style, you'll need to put the name of the style in quotes within the brackets, and if you want multiple, divide them with commas. The rest of the line is a little more complicated, but still pretty straightforward. The very start of the line will either correspond to the particular tab, like image to image, text to image, training, or extras, or it can begin with custom script, which of course means that it is a variable for one of the selectable scripts in the dropdowns, which have their own interfaces. Custom script also applies to extensions that have their interface show up in one of the main tabs, like ControlNet or Tile Diffusion. After custom script and a slash, these lines will have the file name of the custom script, such as xyz underscore grid dot py. After the script file name, the tab for the script is listed. To make things extra spicy, some of these scripts also have separate sets of variables for text to image and image to image. Now that we've covered all the elements, let's review the format for variable names in this file. Lines for an interface element on a particular tab have three parts. The tab name, the name of the interface element, and the variable. For interface elements in a custom script or extension, these three parts are preceded by custom script and the file name of the script. Now that we know how to interpret information from this file, let's talk about how to change it. The most simple and straightforward way is to do a simple edit in the config file. We are going to open the config file in our automatic 11.11 folder and find the variable we want. In the tradition of old school programming tutorials, I'm going to change the value for the prompt to be hello world. Now we will save and close the file. As you can see, this does not take effect immediately. For this to happen, we need to press the Reload UI button near the bottom of the screen. And boom, we have Hello World in our prompt field. However, there are two problems with this simple approach. First, while the file contains over a thousand variables, realistically, we probably only want to change a small fraction of those. 
the variables we want to change are scattered throughout the file. Second, we don't necessarily know the names for these variables. Usually the nomenclature is pretty straightforward, but searching through the file for a particular variable can be challenging and time-consuming. Surely, there must be a better way. There is, but my name isn't Shirley. It's Silicon. As it turns out, we don't have to search through the whole file to change the specific variable we like. This is because having duplicate lines for the same variable doesn't cause an error. What happens instead is that the variable is updated for each line you see, and only the last one takes effect. In fact, my config file already had many duplications in it before I even touched it. So let's cover a more structured approach to changing things here. To assist with this, I created a spreadsheet, which is linked in the video description. This spreadsheet is read-only, so you'll need to make a copy if you want to use it. This spreadsheet is a dump of my config file, and since the contents are based on particular extensions and scripts installed, it may not match your list. The first column is the variable name, which is what we covered in the explanation section. The flag column can be used to filter variables. In this column, you can select a value corresponding to a particular tab, script, or extension. I also have a value for visibility, which I don't recommend using. And finally, I went through and flagged variables from image to image, text to image, and control net that I thought would be most appealing to change. These variables are flagged as 1 dash recommended. This list is probably not perfect, so if you discover an error, I apologize, but hopefully we'll get most of what you need done. Anyway, go through and update the value column for the rows you want to change. Make sure that the new value is in the correct format. If the original value has quotes, you need quotes. If it is true or false, you can only use true or false. If you make changes in a row, the column called updated will change to true. Once you're done making all your changes, filter the updated column to only true values. Then copy all the rows in the column titled to paste into UI config. Now, open your config file and scroll all the way to the bottom. I'm going to paste the new rows as the second to last row of variables. We use this one instead of the last one because the last line doesn't have a comma while all our lines do. Alternatively, you can instead add a comma to the last line, paste your rows, then remove the comma from the last row you pasted. But ain't no one got time for that. Finally, save the updated config file and reload the automatic 1111 interface. All our changes should now be implemented. If you want to remove the changes you just made, just delete all the rows you just added from the config file. And that's that. Please like and subscribe this video if it provided you with a powerful and somewhat easy way to configure Automatic 11.11 to your liking. As a final note, this should also work on other forks of Automatic 11.11 like Vlad, but I haven't tested it, so no promises. If you have any topics on Stable Diffusion you want to learn more about, let me know in a comment and I might make a video on it. As always, thanks for watching and see you next time.